thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, for this opportunity to do my maiden speech during the debate on global poverty, a debate I was inspired to speak in after meeting Class P of Hayfield Primary School in Upton, and should I not have spoken today, I'm quite convinced they would never have forgiven me, so more of Class P later. <laughs> First, may I say, it's a great honour to be here representing the people of Wirral West. And for those who don't know Wirral West, well, it's placed on the northwest tip of the Wirral Peninsula, which is placed between the River Mersey and the River Dee, with wonderful views of the Welsh hills and the Liverpool waterfront. It's described as a hidden treasure, made up of a beautiful collection of towns and villages, West Kirby, Hoy Lake, Greasby, Frankby, Irby, Pensby, Barnston, Thingwall, Upton and Caldy, and like a string of pearls, each one a jewel sitting next to one another. But let's not get carried away. Beyond the natural beauty, we have struggles and concerns. The small village shops fighting to survive against the giant supermarket chains, youth unfulfilled and unemployed, mm. debt and financial hardship. And to this end, and for these reasons, I will be supporting my constituents. They had faith to vote in me, and I have strength to support them. And some distinguished MPs have done so beforehand, for I follow in the footsteps of some notable predecessors, distinguished by the considerable ability and dedication of service. Lloyd, Selwyn Lloyd, who served as Foreign Secretary, Chancellor of the Exchequer and Speaker of the House. David Hunt, now Lord Hunt, of Wirral, who became Secretary of State for Wales and Secretary of State for Employment, and more recently, Stephen Hesford, all of whom serve the constituents tirelessly, and I hope I will follow in their tradition. But on a personal note, I want to thank David Hunt and his wife Paddy. Both still play a significant role in the community, and in particular with Hoylake Cottage Hospital, Wirral Marine Disabled Association, and the Wirral Sick Children's Fund, and they have been tremendous support to me, helping me throughout the 10 years I have tried to win this seat. It has been a long journey, and anybody says it's a fast way into politics, it is not. <laughs> but you know what? It was a journey worth taking, and the 10 years once I got it made it all the more pleasurable to be here. Now, Wirral West is an enchanting and an enriching place, full of history and legend, and filled with the spirits of Vikings, some of which I'll explain today, and the rest, well, I guess you'll have to discover that when you come and visit. And there'll be plenty of opportunities to do so. If you're a golfer, then you're most likely to want to visit the Royal Liverpool Golf Club in Hoy Lake. Once again, in 2014, it will be hosting the Golf Open. Yeah, yeah. And in 2012, it will be hosting for the first time the Women's British Open. As well as golf, the sailing too, particularly the Wilson Trophy Championship held annually, where 200 Olympic-class sailors compete to win the trophy. Yes, it's frantic and it's frenetic as they spin across the water, touching Grand Prix speeds. And our home team, that's the West Kirby Hawks, is one of the best around, and it won it last year. But Wirral West has been shaped by its geography, the prevailing winds and the high seas, which, back in 900 AD, brought the invading Vikings who settled there. They made their parliament in the hamlet of Thingwall, and on Thurstason Hill, the highest point of Wirral, is Thor's stone. Legend had it that Thor, the great Viking god of thunder, fertility and the law, would ride across the heavens on his chariot. The noise would be the rumble of thunder, and his hammer which he'd throw would be a flash of light which was lightning across the skies. <laughs> and this hammer is meant to be buried under Thor's stone. It is said that Thor had a simple way of making laws and righting wrongs, simply killing those who stood in his way. <laughs> but being mere mortals and not gods, we've produced a moderate way to perform these duties, beginning here in this house. It was also King Canute who stood on the seaport in Meld, attempting to turn back the tide, flooding the north shores of Wirral. Whether that's fact or fable, it's a lesson that neither man nor king can turn back the tide, but given the right to govern and the ability to work in consensus, as this historic coalition has, we look forward to creating and altering our future. Yeah. And the people of Wirral know all about this, for they have the strength of character, the warmth of heart, and also the sense of humour. Perhaps there's still a bit of Viking left in them. 
They know what's good for their area and they will fight hard for what they believe. And for those who say democracy doesn't work, and for those who believe a person or a community cannot change things, well then I'd say take heart from the people of Wirral. For when they were threatened with the closures of the libraries and with the leisure centres, and they viewed it as a fait accompli, well it was not. 60,000 people in Wirral took to the streets, demonstrated, lobbied, held public meetings, and the decision was overturned. People can make a difference, and the people of Wirral did make a difference. So, it would be true today, I didn't know which debate I was going to speak in and do my maiden speech in. You see, all of the debates were relevant to the people of Wirral West, their aims and their ideas. A health debate, well, we're home to Arrow Park Hospital, which employs 6,000 people and serves 400,000 people across Wirral, being the biggest and the busiest acute, acute trust in the North West. Education too is important. Wirral West has some of the best and progressive schools. Caldy, West Kirby Grammar, Hilbury, Pensbury, Pensby, Wood, uh, Woodchurch High School, and work and pensions too, as the young search for employment and the old search for support. But when I received 20 letters from Class P at Hayfield Primary School and another letter from the sixth form girls at Upton Convent, I knew I had to do my debate now in this speech. For Class P have signed up to the One Goal campaign, wanting to help global poverty through education. This campaign is trying to use the profile of the 2010 World Cup in South Africa, bringing together footballers and fans of all ages, charities and local and world leaders to make education a reality for 72 million primary school children worldwide by 2015. I spoke to Class P and I said, explain to me what poverty means to you. They said it was about not being able to go to school, to learn and to make friends. It was about being sick, but not having a doctor. It was about living in fear. But most of all, poverty is to live with no hope and to die with no one caring. According to UNICEF, 24,000 children die each day this way, and 10.6 million uh, children die before the age of five. That's the same children as the population in France and Germany and Greece and Italy. That's all their children added together. So today, I bring the message of the next generation to the attention of the current generation. Beat poverty through education. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and I believe in the goodness of human beings and the thread of humanity that touches every core of us. It is here in this chamber from all sides of the house. And it is in Class P at Hayfield School. We are all here, Deputy Speaker, Madam Speaker, as you're both still here, <laughs> with the desire to help others so ultimately allowing them to help themselves. But different times, and we are living in different times, require different solutions. We're living in a financial downturn. We're living in financial straight, uh, restraint. And at a time where we've inherited a record deficit. So we do have to do things differently. We do have to have a different strategy. That said, and I will add this, we must work together and we must work on the success of past parliaments and acknowledge those success. Yeah. Yeah. So I welcome the new coalition government's commitment to spending 0.7% of gross national income as aid by 2013, helping the poorest in the world. I hope it is welcomed by all members of the House and I'm sure it will be, just as it will be welcomed by the children of Hayfield School. Yeah. Yeah.